About a week ago, Microsoft principal engineer Martin Fuller showcased the addition of mesh shaders to the DX12 framework and how this new technique could help devs in delivering higher graphics throughput in next-gen games. And honestly, it looks incredibly impressive when you see the performance improvements. But before we get to that, it's worth highlighting what it works on. And specifically, that's just two architectures, Turing and RDNA 2.0. Basically, RDNA 1.0 really was just a stepping stone. It was lacking a major feature Turing had that came out a year before it. Nonetheless, up until now, RDNA 1.0 has proven to have about the same IPC as Turing as hardware on Box found, and we don't really know what new rendering features may be in Ampere. But what we know is that RDNA 2 seems to have every feature NVIDIA will be putting into their graphics card this year, and so it's no surprise they are trying to hide direct comparisons as we can see here, making the 2080 Ti run at 1440p in this benchmark, while the Xbox Series X is forced to run at a different resolution, 4K. And let's be honest, there's not enough information to be 100% sure of how the RDNA 2.0 lineup, including the consoles, will stack up against Turing or therefore Ampere. There's just not enough known, and this is only one really rough example here that we have from Microsoft. But it is an example. It is something we can extract a little bit of conclusions from, and so that's what I did. And because it's rough math, though, I'm not going to pull up some Excel spreadsheet and show you all of the details, but I will tell you what I did, and there's links in the description if you want to look at it yourself. I looked at the typical performance loss of a 2080 Ti going from 1440p to 4K. I'm saying the drop in frame rate. I find that typically in 4K, a 2080 Ti will get about 58% the frame rate as if it was in 1440p. It is a pretty stark drop off. So if we just look at that and dig through the information for what the Xbox got with mesh shaders on and off, well, I'm going to be honest, it surprised me. You know, I've long said that the Xbox Series X, the next-gen consoles in general, should be about as strong as a 2080 Ti. But what I found is the Xbox Series X seems to be closer to a 2080 Super, at least in this benchmark. Having said that, though, this is really early code on an early console dev kit. But then again, this console dev kit has 56 compute units. It's a dev kit. Microsoft enables the full die for the dev kit. So I can't say something conclusive either way. But what I can say is this. At a minimum, what we know is a dev kit for a next-gen console is performing at least as well as a 2080. And that is a data point. That means at a minimum, expect the next-gen consoles to perform like a 2080, bar none. And based on what I saw in the... Gears of War 5 benchmarks, I think it's probably going to perform better than that once it's optimized. Now, whether it's a 2080 or a 2080 Ti level of performance in the next-gen consoles, it's pretty obvious why NVIDIA doesn't want any direct comparisons right now where they're trying to still sell Turing cards before Ampere launches. After all, right now, the even just the RTX 2080 is selling for about $700. And guys, I'm here to tell you, the Xbox Series X at the very least is probably going to be just $500. NVIDIA does not want you to to see this right now. But worse yet for NVIDIA, it's not really about the cost of the consoles versus their graphics cards. They know that this is some version of RDNA 2.0 and that AMD will have something much more powerful coming to desktop soon enough. How much more powerful? Well, I mean, based on all rumors and all sources I've talked to, it should be about 80 compute units. So 43% more compute units. And when you look at the clock speeds of the PlayStation 5, I think it's safe to say that it's going to be clocked higher than the Xbox Series X when it's not constrained in a console chassis. So let's add that up. 43% more compute units. Let's say 20% higher clock speeds and substantially more bandwidth than what is in the consoles and yeah i think you're looking at big navi being about double the performance of a 2080 most likely but then again the 3080 ti is supposed to be 40 percent stronger than the 2080 ti and so if you multiply the 2080 ti's performance advantage over the 2080 you get 86 percent better performance again all of this is rough math, but I think it's pretty easy to see that the scratch math we can do for Big Navi and 
big ish ampere is pretty close to each other. Now, where am I getting this from? What is the 3080 Ti, you may ask? Well, a couple of weeks ago, of course, Ampere was leaked with a GA103 die having a 320-bit bus. Now, I controversially said I thought this 320-bit card here is actually the 3080, not the 3080 Ti. I think the 3080 Ti is a full 384-bit bus. And that's because despite everyone saying NVIDIA is greedy, they're not stupid. They need to compete with RDNA 2.0. And this actually reminds me of the latest podcast with John Petty that just came out. Uh, AMD, they can't help but take some market share from mm -hmm. NVIDIA. And now... Having said that, let me also say that if you if you ever underestimate Nvidia, you uh, it's, it's one of the most um, nimble companies I have ever seen ever. Uh, mm -hmm. They make they make decisions in a day when something pops up, and then they follow through on them. They've got enormous resources. If they got confronted with something where, let's say, AMD had an amazing new product uh, that was just such a killer product that uh, people were going to buy them as fast as AMD could build them, NVIDIA would have a counter product in six months or less. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's, that's how nimble they are. Uh, I can't imagine a world where nvidia couldn't beat amd's top card mm -hmm. i just i just uh well it's happened yeah. before though i mean there's been more oh, times 20 years ago <laughs> no 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 the 5870 was out for six months an undisputed leader before nvidia could launch the gtx 480 yeah. like the 290x as well that was a brief win but it was a win you know that wasn't that long ago that wasn't even a decade ago and look i i do agree i don't think nvidia is just going to let radeon take the performance crown but then again i don't think they ever intended to do that in the past either and amd still succeeded not a lot in recent history in the past few years but I mean, when I got into PC gaming, AMD was taking the performance crown just as often as NVIDIA, and those were the days where they had money. AMD has money again. But again, I think NVIDIA is aware of this. I think they became aware of this a couple months ago, and now they're pulling out all the stops. They're not going to wait. They're going to press forward on a proven node, Samsung's marketed 8 nanometer. Even if it has a performance deficit, there are things NVIDIA can do to give them an advantage as well. And that includes going with the fastest GDR6 on the market, 18 gigabit per second, supposedly. And if they do, that would give the 384-bit 3080 Ti over 860 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, an astronomical amount. Actually, the funny thing is I was told Sony was considering going with this memory speed at the start, despite people mocking me and telling me it won't exist in a year, and here it shows it clearly will, you idiots. But... You know, I don't know. I think Sony and Microsoft realize it's more important to hit a good price point. The extra 10, 20% in performance won't really matter. They've got enough performance for 4K 60 Ultra Gaming. But for NVIDIA, it's not about having enough performance. They're supposed to have the best performance and even a 10% performance loss against the top gaming RDNA 2.0 card would be incredibly impactful on their brand image. And they know it's going to come down to the wire based on all public information coming out of the consoles. Like you can apparently fit 52 RDNA 2.0 compute units in a sub 300 watt box. And you can also apparently clock it up to 2.2 gigahertz. And all of this can be done not on seven nanometer EUV, but just on a normal enhanced seven nanometer node and in a 360 millimeter squared die showing that whatever AMD's managed to do there is not nearly as much of the hot and loud problem even when these compute units are close to each other what I'm saying is the fastest GDR6 big Navi cards will likely be incredibly competitive with the fastest GDR6 Ampere cards. Now, a NVIDIA may buy the fastest GDR6 on the market to give them some kind of advantage over the fact that AMD clearly has a half node up on them with 7 nanometer enhanced versus NVIDIA's Samsung 8 nanometer, although it's really an enhanced 10 nanometer. But NVIDIA does have a even bigger Ampere coming, that 8,000 cuticore monstrosity and if they bring out a cut down version of the card and i think they will to keep the performance crown with gamers 
that should win. But I do think that might be some two to three thousand dollar Titan Volta like card no one can really afford. And so I do believe in these <laughs> cheaper, I say cheaper, it still might be around a thousand dollars high end gaming graphics card markets. It's going to be very, very competitive later this year and it's it's also worth remembering amd's got their own answer to monster amp here and that's called arcturus as i reported half a year ago this will be the 128 compute unit upgraded gcn card although now i guess they're calling it cdna card coming out to combat that but the point is, though their strategies may differ a little bit, it seems like these companies are going to be competing toe-to-toe -to -toe at all levels within 12 months. I mean, let's face it. We have all the evidence we need to say that RDNA 2.0 is going to be another massive leap in efficiency and therefore performance like RDNA 1.0 was over GCN. And the majority of those cards will be fighting... 384 and 320-bit 8 nanometer ampere cards. Now, there will be a big ampere above that, probably made on TSMC 7 nanometer, but that will be fighting Arcturus, and I do believe the very top HBM2E RDNA cards will still probably come pretty close in compute tasks to the cut-down versions of the Monster Ampere. This market's just going to be competitive again, and it's gonna force it's gonna force Nvidia really to cut the bullshit. Like for example, making it so devs actually allow ray tracing to scale effectively across all architectures. That's right. Pretty soon we will have acceptable, at least small levels of ray tracing across Vega and Pascal, in addition to the consoles and. On that note, I do want to say that AMD is stressing that the RDNA 2.0 in their desktop chips is not the same as either what's in the Xbox or the PlayStation. And that's because the consoles have their own customizations to this architecture. But I get the hint it's also because they've tuned up the ray tracing on their desktop chips relative to the consoles. And I think they may actually be NVIDIA to market by a couple of weeks. That's right. There might be a couple of weeks where AMD holds the performance crown for the first time in seven years. Simply put, competition is back. And it's not just because of the consoles bringing next-gen performance and lowering prices. This is going to happen with full product launches across all levels of desktop graphics cards from both AMD, and because of that, because NVIDIA is unwilling to lose market share, from NVIDIA as well. And I will cover all the information that comes out leading up to these launches and after it. Subscribe to my channel to hear about my thoughts on this. From what I can tell from YouTube analytics, half of you guys watching are not subscribed. So please check that you are, ring the bell button, and share my content. And of course, thank you for watching.